Good morning, day 21 of my honey advent and I have put a clue in my background here as to which honey I've chosen to taste today. So um, can you guess? Good morning Esther. So it's been really difficult trying to um, select which honeys because I have got over 200 um, samples and each one tells a story and I've suddenly realised I've only got five, I'm going to do Christmas Day as well, so I've only got five honeys left to choose. So last night I pulled out a great selection and I had to sort of narrow it down and I like each story to have a bit of a connection with the day that I'm sharing it. So um, there's been quite a bit of thought into all this and now I'm thinking I need to go on right through to the end of February. Anyway, today I have chosen sunflower honey. Now, the the beekeeper, I don't know the beekeepers who made this. I bought this in a local delicatessen in Castle Carey, I think. And it's bar, it's from um, Wild About Honey Co. And I've seen these honeys around quite a bit. So they're obviously a good company and they're, they're supplying lots of people. They support local beekeepers. It's all raw, it's not being treated. They've won a great taste award. So it's good stuff. But I really, really just wanted my own jar of sunflower honey. So when I saw it in the deli, it was like, well, I've got to have that. And um, I had never tasted sunflower honey until the first course in Bologna, the first honey sensory course, which was in, or for me, was in November 2017. And we were tasting all these different honeys. Oh, I realised I haven't brought a glass, but, um, and sunflower was one of them. And I was so excited. And when you see the sunflower, I mean, look at that colour. That is amazing. It is sunshine in a pot. And I just couldn't believe it. So when I've been trying to learn and study the honeys so I can pass the exams, um, it, it you cling on to things that you can remember about certain tastes. But the sunflower honey, like very similar to the dandelion honey, and I suppose it's because they are sun rays, they just have this really bright yellow golden colour. And so when I see the samples, I can look at it and I go, oh, that's either sunflower or it's dandelion. And then you taste it. And the sunflower tastes very, very different to the dandelion. Now look at that. It's just amazing. And the smell as well. It really is boiled fruit, tinned peaches, apricot jam. It's just heavenly. So I'm going to take a dollop. Oh, I'm so, I'm cross with myself. I've been trying to do too many different things whilst also thinking today I should do nothing because it's the solstice and it's a very special day for quietness and meditation. But here we go. Mm. That's semi crystallised. Mm. And it is. It's just beautiful. It melts. It's like having, um, oh, it really is. As you, as it melts, you get more and more layers of flavour. So there is the mango, there's apricot jam, it's sort of boiled fruit. It's just, just heavenly. But the reason I picked it today, it is the winter solstice. And for me, daylight is really, really important. And the solstice is a time for me where I can start to think, oh, the days are going to get longer again. So I suffer from SAD um, in October. So I, I really struggle as the days get shorter. I grieve for the end of the summer. And I find that to cope through the autumn and winter, I have my birthday at the end of November. So I would always try and arrange something important for my birthday. So I just want to keep my mind busy. In October, there would be this sort of ritual of events that I would go to. Um, so we have Somerset ca um, carnivals, which are normally the beginning of October, which are all really brightly lit up and decorated floats. So I'd look forward to those. And of course this year we've had none of those, but amazingly, I've actually been okay. And the December the 21st, just 
you know, I can just sort of come alive again. I'm thinking, right. And the more I learn about me bees, and the more I realise, oh gosh, I'm going to start turning into a bee. But the bees are the same. So they go into this sort of torpor state, into this relaxation state. And then December the 21st, when the days get longer, the bees know spring is coming. And because it's going to be six weeks from laying an egg to a bee being able to leave the hive and fly, the queen and the she starts to send out these pheromones to say, right, we've got to start planning ahead. So the bees inside this hive, so even though we might not be seeing them flying, they're all quiet inside, they're starting to clean the cells, they're starting to prepare for the queen to start laying so that when the snowdrops come out, they've got enough bees to fly out, leave the hive and pollinate. So it's amazing. So the bees, even in this, you know, just when we think we're going into the deepest part of winter, the bees can see that spring is coming. So I love that. But the other reason I wanted to share about sunflowers and sunflower honey is because I've known for a long time that sunflowers were one of the first neonicotinoid treated plants. And that always worried me because the neonics, what they do is it coats a seed. So you have a seed which has this neonicotinoid coating on the outside. And then as that seed spurts into life and grows, every part of that plant is toxic to insects. The neonics are designed to kill insects. Now, how they could ever say, oh, it only kills this insect or that insect? Well, we now know it doesn't. So even if a bee was to drink a droplet of water off a sunflower leaf, it would have the toxins in because these neonics, they leach out of the plant. Every single part of the plant is toxic. So when you see the bees on the um, taking the pollen or drinking the nectar, you're just thinking it, it's awful. They're just having this, this poison. And neonics have nicotine in them, which makes them addictive <laughs> so the bees keep coming back for more and it's just it is just horrific and what people don't understand is you hear that oh yes the neonics they've been tried and they're safe for bees but when they treat a seed or when they put these chemicals together they don't just use one chemical they combine them so they'll have three or four of the neonics and then they'll combine them with fungicides and it's this combination that is so lethal and instead of cancelling each other out, they sort of power each other up so they get more dramatic. And it's actually thanks to the sunflower or the poisoning of sunflowers and therefore the poisoning of bees that the danger of neonics first came to light. Because in Spain and south of France and um, Italy, beekeepers would move their bees to the sunflower fields to, to get the honey because the honey's so delicious. And what they found was the first time that the neonic treated seeds had been used, bees were dying in their millions. They were just all dying. And so then there had to be research to find out why these bees were dying. And that's when it came down to what had changed. And it was the seeds of the sunflowers. Now my big question is, if it's killing bees, if it's killing the insects, what on earth is it doing to us if we eat those seeds? Those seeds are so potent. The seed has the potential for life to grow into this huge plant. And so imagine if that seed has been coated with these chemicals. So unfortunately now, when I see these pictures of these wonderful fields of sunflowers, I don't look at them and see them as beautiful. I see them as this toxic um, waste. It's this wasteland that's not only poisoning the insects and the birds and anything that goes near those plants, it's also <laughs> poisoning us because we're eating them or we're having the sunflower oil. So again, as I say, the main thing to save the bees is to buy organic food, but we don't have enough information about why organic food is so important. And even the other day, somebody said, well, why, why have you got organic champagne? And it's like, because I know then that the chemicals haven't been sprayed on the grapes. And I think we don't often connect our food or the growing of our food with our own digestion and our own health. And so it's that putting it together and the bees are the connectors, they're the missing link. So what is killing bees is also killing us. 
I know it. And it's when you have these little stories that you can then make that little change. So by understanding how the sunflowers that were treated with neonix was killing bees, that was it. No more, never again was I going to buy any sunflower product or sunflower seed that wasn't organic. Because if I bought non-organic, I'm supporting that growing using the neonix. So I've picked the sunflower honey today because it's the winter solstice. It's a day when we're, we're going to start getting more daylight, more sunshine. And we need that sunshine to keep us healthy um, and to give us hope. The sunshine is always hope. When it's a blue sky, sunny day, we always feel a bit better and that there's something better to look forward to. So I know that many of you watching this have had your Christmas plans completely dashed, travel plans, and now there's this whole other layer where um, shops and businesses that may or may not still be able to be open on, tr you know, through the mail or physically now have the problem that anything coming from Europe can't be brought in. So we are an island, but we are an island community. And now is the time to just retreat in, be grateful for whatever we have and to sort of pivot you know to just think okay the choices have been taken away from me but actually there's an advantage to that the advantage to not having um people coming to see me this christmas is i haven't had to dust i haven't had to hoover i don't need to rush about try driving around the country visiting all our family no matter how much we love all our family Christmas and the solstice time is a time to rest, is a time to contemplate, is a time to sort of semi-hibernate, to restore our energy so that we're ready for the vibrancy of spring, for the energy that we all need for spring. So let's just enjoy today for what it is. Do what you can do. Don't worry about what you can't do anymore. We're all suffering the same problems. You know, it's not just me saying I'm not going to visit anybody this year so um oh bye cat bye 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 so happy solstice everyone I hope you have a little bit of sunshine if you've got sunflower honey just take it and if you need some honeys or you want to know where to get honeys from in the UK because we can't be shipping things all around the world at the moment then just send me a message send me a message and I'll tell you where you can get your honeys from and um yeah happy solstice and thank you very much for joining me. So just four more honeys to taste. How on earth do I choose them? So lots of love, happy solstice, and um, keep well and keep hopeful and smiling.